Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living FTK boo-boo stain. Off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. We are currently sitting at 1,044 subscribers, and I really do appreciate all of the support from the bottom of my heart. If I could talk today, I'm slurring my words. I'm tired as hell. Um, had a super rough day today, so I just, <laughs> I, I want to do something fun right now, and I figured I would talk about some FTK baby back bullshit, <laughs> so, oh, Lord have mercy, what, what, what kind of crap are we looking at today, so first of all, let's get these BS on, ads on out of here, dueling book, fix the shit, um, this is a brand new Telephone FTK, but not just any ordinary Telephone FTK, this is Dimension the Dice Dungeon with a side of runic hot sauce cheese FTK. So I, I got to give all credit where credit is due. I got to give a shout out to Hanko Chow on TCG Player for posting this baby back BS clockwork night machine dupe looking crap. <laughs> um, his friend came up with this build and essentially what it is, is a telephone runic FTK where you have multiple avenues to beat the opponent. Uh, by basically just drawing deep through your deck with the runic spells and then using either Cannon Soldier 1 or uh, Mark 2 to get yourself the victory. Using cards like Keldeo and Mudora to recycle back any of your cards, especially like Skull Dreads if you go through both of them or you go through one and you need to get it back, whatever the case may be. You're also playing in the side deck uh, Soul Absorbing Bone Tower to be able to beat the opponent. If, like, you know, you hit them with a Dark Ruler, then you can still mill them out by playing out Zombie World. So every time you play out Telephon, you mill the top two cards of their deck. But the thing is, is, like, you really don't need that package if, you know, you're already gaining life points. You can just do that over and over. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and go on through this deck uh, profile here, if I could talk today. We're playing one copy of Zephyros the Elite, one copy of Cannon Soldier and Cannon Soldier Mark II. I don't know why he's playing both, to be honest. I feel like he's just playing both because if one gets Impermed or Baylor, then you got the other one as backup. We're playing one Gadget Gamer, so when he's normal summon, you can add a level one machine from your deck to your hand. Uh, Telephon is a level one, that's hot. Uh, and then you can tribute this card, special summon a Mortronic Monster from your hand. Then you could special summon a Gadget Hauler from your hand or deck. That is a you can effect, so you don't have to do that. And then you can only use each effect once per turn. So it Lone Fire blossoms out into a Telephone, which is really good. Two Caldeo, we know how broken that is. Three Telephon, because it's not once per turn. Uh, two copies of Medora, because it's good. And then that's literally it for the monsters. And we're playing one call back because we're a combo deck. Hand traps suck. Uh, three copies of Clockwork Knight. So all face-up monsters on the field become machine types. Machine type monsters you control gain five for attack and defense. We don't care. Also, machine type monsters your opponent controls lose five for attack and defense. Whatever. You can banish this card from your grave, then discard one card. Add one earth machine monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Clockwork Knight once per turn. You can only activate one per turn. Uh, so yeah, you just banish it from the grave. Ditch any card from your hand to add an Earth Machine. Guess what? Telephone's an Earth Machine, so that's another way to get to Telephon. Three Dice Dungeon. So when it's activated, you add Dimension Dice from your deck to your hand, and then it has a Battle Phase effect that we literally don't care about. We literally just play it to get to Dimension Dice, which is not a once per turn. So it says if you control a card with an effect that requires a die roll, ooh, look, it's Telephon. Uh, you contribute one monster, especially some one monster with an effect that requires a die roll from your hand or deck. So... Usually, you know, if you need to get to like a second telephon, you can just have the first one out, activate dimension dice, tribute to get to the second one. And hey, if you've got another dimension dice, you can activate the second one, tribute the second telephon, go for the third telephon. Hey, congratulations. You're now one step closer to your FTK. We're playing one foolish burial because dumping monsters like Medora, Keldi, or telephones is really good. Uh, Foolish Barrel Goods, because you can dump Clockwork Knight and just start making plays. You can dump a Runic Spell if you need to. You, you've got several options. Uh, we're playing three copies of Machine Dupe, one Monster Reborn, one One for One. Then we're playing one more Tronic Converter. So you can target one Machine Monster you control, and then you apply the following effect depending on its battle position. So if it's attack position, you could special summon a more Tronic Monster from your deck with a different name than the targeted monster, and then place the targeted monster on top of the deck. And then if it's in defense position, you can change that monster to attack position. If you do special summon a level 4 lower machine monster from your hand, you can only activate one per turn. So I'm guessing he's playing this because if you have a telephone in defense, you can activate converter to switch it to attack mode to summon another telephone. That seems to make the most sense. For the runic spells, we're playing one destruction, one flashing fire, double fountain, one freezing curse, one droplet, one slumber, and three tip with the terraforming. Um, yeah, it's just a little mini runic engine. 
you know, you're not trying to mill out the opponent. You're just trying to FTK them with cannon soldiers. So, you know, you can use the fountains to draw through your deck more, put runic spells on the bottom of your deck, keep a decent deck size. You know, you just want to get through to all your combo pieces. For the side deck, we're playing one Mizuki, one Banshee, one Bone Tower with double Zombie World. We already talked about this. Just, you know, you use Zombie World to change all your monsters to zombies. And then, you know, with Bone Tower, each time a zombie-type monster, monster is a special summon, it sends the top two cards of your opponent's deck to the grave. So if you're able to constantly loop your Telephons with either Link Plays or using Cannon Soldier to tribute and deal damage, or, like, you know, if you use Dark Ruler uh, no more so you can't deal any damage, then you can still tribute off the Cannon Soldier, tributing the Telephons that are treated as zombies while Zombie World's on the field, and then constantly recur them with the other Telephons and just mill the opponent out. Three Dark Ruler, one Feather Duster, three Lightning Storm, two Zombie World, three Imperm. Uh, for the extra deck, we're playing one Gary and one Hugin for our uh, Runic targets. One Dugaris, because it's broken AF this format. One Apollosa, one Barricade Board, one B Cop, one Datch Paparazzi, one Firewall, one Unicorn, double Link Karibo, one Anima, double Skulldred, and one Sprite Elf. I don't know if he was actually playing B Cop now that I think about it. I'm pretty sure he was, um, but I mean... If you want to substitute it for something else, go right ahead. This this deck is is honestly pretty uh pretty malleable to whatever kind of strategy you want to use. Perfect example. I don't feel like you need this zombie engine. Like what you're taking up two, three, four, five. You're taking up five slots in your extra deck. You could easily throw in like three copies of Evenly Match and like I don't know two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. Like this engine is kind of irrelevant because if you're hitting the opponent with Dark Ruler. If you're able to establish Cannon Soldier with Telephon, yeah, you're not doing any damage, but remember, Telephon just gives you life points. So you can just make yourself gain more and more life points until you go to time if the opponent's that stupid, or they're just going to scoop to you anyway because you're just going to constantly be looping your Telephons. And they can't say, oh, you're stalling because you are progressing the game state. You are actively making plays. And remember, the new rules now say that if you are in a loop, as long as you're able to show the opponent how you do the loop and that you can consistently do that every time, then they don't have to watch you do the loop over and over. They can just scoop the game to you. So I don't really feel like this zombie engine is necessary. Uh, Hanko Chow seemed to allude to that in his article because he even said he doesn't really care for the build. Uh, whether that's because it's a toxic FTK or not is another thing to be discussed entirely. <laughs> but um, it is an out to the Flunder matchup. You do have to keep that in mind as well. I feel like if you're playing Dark Ruler and Lightning Storms, and Feather Duster and Imperms in your side. Like, you're already kind of spanking that Flunder ass. But, I mean, it's it's something to keep in mind. I mean, you're not going to be taking this to a fucking regional or a YCS. Like, not even to a remote duel, although that's probably filled with cheaters anyway. So, maybe you would have better luck with this kind of deck. But, I mean, if you got a lot of Flunder at your locals, sure, boo-boo. Like, like, play the Zombie World package. I feel like I'd rather play stuff like Evenly just to make sure I'm really breaking the opponent's board and leaving them with less resources to play with during my turn. Um, but I feel that that's all up to player preference. Let's go ahead and randomize some hands here and see what we got. One, two, three, four, five. This already looks disgusting, AF. Um, so we've got <laughs> you normal summon telephone, activate dice dungeon to get in another dimension dice, activate dimension dice, tribute telephone, special summon another telephone from deck, activate another dimension dice that you surfed off the dungeon, tribute the second telephone, summon the third from your hand. Congratulations. Like all you need now is a way to get to cannon soldier and like you still have foolish barrel goods to play with. So like you could dump what like clockwork night. Yeah. To add an earth machine. That gets you right to cannon. Oh, it's a dark. Fuck me. Well, okay. I guess that that's not really as good. But I guess you could, like, dump a runic spell, maybe. I don't know. Maybe dump, like, Mortronic Converter. Dump the Clockwork Knight to try and get a search anyway. Because it can search you MK2, I guess. Uh, that, that's, that's true. That could be why he's playing Clockwork Knight, too. So, I haven't done any, like, test hands with this and actually played it out. I just wanted to show this off. Because I think it's hilarious that someone has come up with a ftk deck in a tier zero format like not that this wasn't possible until now we've known that telephone ftk exists it's just you know it's more a matter of when is this card going to get banned you know we already dealt with mystic mind but now we got to deal with the other boogaloo in the room which is telephone sitting in the corner staring at you with like beady red eyes just waiting to be broken in half so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below about this like i said I, i've had a rough day so it's it's hilarious to see an ftk deck just sitting here on my dueling book and i'm gonna go mess around with it maybe i'll go piss off valley d in some play test games and then <laughs> instead of him rolling his eyes every time i play mystic mind he can roll his eyes every time i play fucking telephone anyways guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video